Thanks for joining us for another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder, and joining us today is Eric Stevens from GINA, the Geographic Information Network of Alaska at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Thank you for joining us, Eric. My and pleasure, Dave. Thank you. And uh, t you're joining us here to talk a little bit more about satellites and how satellites work, and especially one neat feature that's working over Alaska right now. What is that? Mm -hmm. Well, there's uh, a lot of weather satellites and a lot of instruments on mm -hmm. these satellites, and there are new generations going up and new instruments. This includes something called the day-night band, okay. which is not a cover band at the local bar, yeah. but it's a new satellite that is very useful, especially here in Alaska, especially in the winter. In the winter time, yeah, that mm -hmm. makes it a little bit hard to use some of the normal tools that we associate with uh, weather satellite imagery. Right. You know, one of the classic weather satellite instruments is just visible light. What mm -hmm. would the human eye see if you were riding on a weather satellite yourself yeah. and looked down, and it was black and white, you'd see uh, the clouds reflecting the sunlight. And we've got mm -hmm. an example from the Pacific Ocean. There's a geostationary satellite. And we can see that the eastern side of the image is uh, in daylight. The western side, it's night over there, so mm -hmm. you don't see anything because there's no sunlight over there. Right. And visible imagery, it's very intuitive. You see the clouds just like you see them right. um, standing on the ground, but now you're a satellite seeing them from above. But the problem is, what about the night side of okay. the planet? How do you track the storms? How do you know where the rain is, the snow, the, the weather, mm -hmm. if you can't see the clouds? And that's why, just like a television can change from one channel to another, or a radio can change stations, mm -hmm. satellites can change the frequency of the electromagnetic spectrum okay. that they're looking at. Uh -huh. We can go to infrared instead of visible light. You know, it's heat energy. You can see heat, and we've okay. got another satellite picture from the same time, same satellite, mm -hmm. out over the Pacific Ocean. That's the infrared side. Okay. and we're seeing temperature there. And even at night, when there's no light, everything still has a temperature. So we're sensing something with a thermometer instead of uh, perhaps the, the visible side of that, is what you're saying? That's right. Okay. Um, okay. On this depiction, colder features are, are lighter shades, mm -hmm. warmer features are dark. And so clouds tend to be colder than the ground. Clouds are higher in the atmosphere, it's cooler. Oh, okay. And so that very same image on the western, or the left-hand side, of the, the globe, now we can see the clouds there, even though it's nighttime, because we're seeing the temperatures. Mm -hmm. And one nice feature is that tropical storm there, um, just in the middle of the, the northern hemisphere there, high, uh, hurricane or typhoon, That's depending that on swirly your, part that we see in the middle of the image? There you go, you okay. can even see the eye on yeah, it there, okay. especially in the infrared image. So, we've got two kinds of imagery there from the same satellite, different instruments, you know, different channels, like on a television, mm -hmm. visible and infrared. You know, it turns out, there's no one magic tool uh, each has its strengths, each has its flaws, mm -hmm. weaknesses. The visible is nice, it's intuitive, it's easier sure. to understand, sure. but doesn't work at night. Okay. Infrared is nice, it, it works at night, mm -hmm. you can see temperatures, but there is a catch. What if your clouds and the nearby bare ground or yeah. open water, what if those were about the same temperature? Oh, that's going to be hard to figure out what's going on. If you can only yeah. see temperature and you have two features mm -hmm. that are the same temperature, they will they will look the same. You, you won't be able to tell. They're camouflaged. This happens, especially, it can happen around Alaska, mm -hmm. especially over the ocean when you have low clouds that are the same temperature as the open water. That happens quite a bit in Alaska. Yeah. We have an example. Now, okay. this is from a different geostationary satellite. It's down over the Atlantic Ocean. Look in the South mm -hmm. Atlantic. In infrared, we've highlighted in a yellow circle there, um, there's uh, some patches of clouds, but it looks like there's a clear area in the middle of that oh, image. Sure. Yep. That's the infrared look. But let's take a look at the, the visible channel, and we can see there's a stripe of clouds across the oh. middle of that circle that is only visible yeah. in the visible. Okay, right. The, the trick here is that those are low clouds of about the same temperature as the surrounding ocean. Mm -hmm. So from an infrared point of view, where you're seeing temperature, mm -hmm. the clouds in the water nearby are the same temperature, they look the same. It's only on the visible that you can see what stands out as the actual imagery. Okay. Two tools, each have their strengths and weaknesses. Can we combine them? That's where the day-night band comes in. Oh, okay. It's a super sensitive visible sensor mm -hmm. that can actually see by moonlight. It can even see the aurora. Wow. And in Alaska, oh. at, we have long winter nights. Mm -hmm. um, we can use that day-night band. Here's an example from that storm that, that blew the Kulik drilling platform ashore near Kodiak Island okay. in uh, December back in 2012, mm -hmm. this image is right near when that storm happened and it's in the middle of the night in December. Now this looks it like visible imagery. Looks like daytime imagery, it's huh. amazing. That sensor can take any little bit of moonlight and just make the most of it. We How can see that? so much detail. Even in the northern part of the image there, you can see some aurora 
up there, the Northern Lights. That's that are, band that goes across the, the Arctic Slope? You got the it, slope? that's the Northern Lights. We're seeing black and white image here, yeah. so you don't get the green or the, the purple colors there. That? But that is the Aurora. There's another example of the day-night band, and this is from January of uh, 2013. It's about four in the morning, mm -hmm. and uh, this is a snapshot from Weather Service Software. And we can even see in the middle of the image, there's the, the lights of uh, Fairbanks and North Pole over to Isleson Air Force Base. Uh, Anchorage and Matsu lights, city lights are evident as well. Sure we can see, even though it's four in the morning in January, there is no sunlight to be had, that just enough moonlight is available that this sensor can see that. So we're, we're trying to solve that puzzle, puzzle where visible light is good, but only during the daytime. IR is good at night, but okay. you, you can't see the difference between clouds and ground sometime. Right. The day-night band is an attempt to do the best of both with one tool. And it's brand new for Alaska here, and uh, we're hoping to use it in the forecast process um, and help predict storms, weather patterns, to, to help get good forecasts for people. Okay, another uh, tool in the weather toolkit for uh, meteorologists in Alaska and researchers worldwide. Thank you so much, Eric, for joining us today. And you can learn more about GINA and the day-night band by going to the web address that you see on your screen. For Alaska Weather Facts, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. Mm -hmm.